Hey guys, how you doing today? It's me, Kelly. So today I am going to do the request for watercolor ATC cards and how you can use your watercolor in your ATC cards. And what we're starting off with today is mixed media paper. Now this is just a mixed media tablet. It's the Hansen mixed media. Um, you can use your watercolor, but uh, the few emails that I got said that you didn't have mentioned that you guys didn't have the watercolor. Can you use mixed media? So I thought, well, let's mix it up all together and do it. Um, these are your normal uh, ATC card sizes. They are two and a half by three and a half. That is it all the time. This one looks a little crooked. This one looks a little crooked too, because I just eyed it up and did it. But if you're doing a trade or something to that, you can also sell these. They're called um, ACEOs, I believe. Uh, you can look them up. I don't sell mine, but you can trade or do whatever. So I have a watercolor palette here with me, my normal, you know, just my one that I had had sitting here. And I'm going to spray it a little bit just to kind of, I need to put water in here. Um, I love how much you guys are loving the... Uh, using the watercolor and finding different ways because, you know, all of us who are an artist in whatever way, whether you're watercolor or you're acrylic or you're, you use gouache or um, colored pencils, whatever you have, whatever you have, whatever brand you have, whatever, if you have Crayola or you have, you know, golden, it, it doesn't matter. Just get there and play. So like I said, I'm just going to squirt. And I'm going to squirt my paper just a little bit. Now, I'm not going to squirt it too much, but you know. Okay, so here are a few things that you guys wanted to know. You asked about the white school glue, which I use sometimes as my faux Mod Podge. If you take your white school glue, mix it with a little bit of water to make it a little more, um, I don't want to say pliable, more workable, I guess, because this is thick. Um it spreads real nice and it can be like your faux Mod Podge. Is it archival? I don't think so. Um, I do know that the Elmer's glue sticks are archival that you can use for scrapbooking. I know that the Elmer's school glue, you can get washable, but as far as archival, I don't know. And, um, you know, I use it. I've used it from when I first started. Um, and it's not turned anything yellow, but some people don't, you know, don't necessarily want to use it uh, for fear. And that's fine. You can use your Mod Podge or whatever kind of podge you have, decoupage. All right. And what I just did was you saw it starting to curl. I spray it on both sides and I'm just going to give it a quick wipe. And it will flatten itself out a bit. That's a little trick. And I'm just going to spray some water to mix that up for when I'm ready. Okay. So I have my papers here and I like to start out light to dark. You do whatever you want to. You do you, boo. You do y'all. All right. So I'm going to wet my brush. And if you're in a trade, right, maybe you're in a trade in a group or anything like that. And maybe you want to make your cards somewhat cohesive. Call me Tim Gunn if you want, but do you understand what I'm saying? It's good for you to do your four cards, right? You can, if you're trading four or six or two or whatever, lay them out and go in with your colors in a different sequence, but the same colors. So they are cohesive. Um, and that's what I'll try to do here. Um, you know, sometimes I get carried away and I just enjoy life. So I'm going to go light to dark. I want to try to mix as many colors as I can on here. So I'm going to go in with yellow. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to stick that in here. I'm going to get a little bit of this glue and pull it out to this water. And let me, I'm just going to show you a couple tricks that I've done over the years. Okay, now I'm mixing that, some of that glue in that water, getting it on my brush. Now remember, your Mod Podge, your white school glue all dries. You can go get your white school glue at the dollar store or at, you know, Walmart, cheap enough. So I'm just going to go on. 
I like abstract and that's how I like to do my backgrounds. So that's what we will do. Maybe I'll just do little, little dots. Okay, I'm gonna rinse my brush. And you know what, maybe I'll do a little red first. Let's do a little bit of red. We'll get some red going on the brush. And pull out here a little bit. And you can see on my mat here, I mean, I might be in too far. What the heck am I? I'm like way in. Okay, so you can see I'm pulling out. I have water on my craft mat. Okay, now if you're using parchment paper, wax paper is really good. I have a video on using wax paper as your nonstick um, mat when you're doing this because you use the wax part and you won't, you know what I mean? I mean, it will soak in after a while on your wax paper, but it definitely gives you something to work on that you don't have to, um, you know, worry about too much. But I'm just going to kind of paint in here. I'm going to go through here. Need a little more water. But I have my water around my glue, and then I can pull out on different parts. Um, and that just saves time. It lets you be able to make almost your watercolor palette on here. And if you have a watercolor palette and want to use it, by all means. But I kind of want to show you what this does. Now, look how beautiful that is coming. I'm not going to be able to lift it up too much because it's going to really drip. And I don't want it to drip yet. So I'll show you when I go to dry it. Now, I don't want too much red on here because I don't want it to be predominantly red. So I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to rinse my brush. I do need to bring another jar in here. I did. I do have my clean one right there that I just cleaned out. If this dog does not lay down, I swear. All right, now I'm gonna go into some blue. Okay, and it's just a darker blue, and I'm just gonna see here, look. So I'm putting it in the water that's there, and I'm just gonna pull some of that white glue. Again, Mod Podge white school glue. You guys are asking about the white school glue. That's what I'm using, but you can use whatever. And make sure you move your brush around. And then I'm going to go in and just touch in different parts. Now, if I go back and forth here on this yellow, it's going to start doing green. And over here, it should do a little purplish or darker. And I'm just swirling it around. And I can go put more yellow in there, which I will. And move this up a bit. Okay. Now you can have another, like I said, piece of paper here or another. Let me cut some more. Let me just cut one more piece here. I don't think it'll be an ATC size, but I can, you know, kind of dab off if I want. But you, like I said, have a piece here that you can just keep dabbing off on and you're making a big, you know, nice mixed media paper. I say it all the time. You guys, you guys know it, you know it, you know it. All right. So I'm going to go in with a little bit more yellow. If it starts getting a little dry, just add some, add some more. I think I'm going to add some yellow here. Yeah, there we go. That's going to start being orange. Can you see that? Yep. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And that's because yellow and red make orange. Let's do up here a little bit. Look at that. Okay, now I want some of this blue in some of the red. Mm 
you're getting like a grape and that's because of the tone of the red or the blue i think it's the blue but it's just bringing in another color yeah and you can have a brush hair come out that's always what i look for when i'm painting right on watercolor uh, I hate when brush hairs come out. Come on. I don't feel like playing today. <laughs> uh, all right. So I have a color here. Let's do. Um, I don't know. I'm kind of digging. I'm, I think I might right now just do squirts and I'm going to dry it and see what we get. Now, to keep your stuff wet here, your glue and your paint, just spray it. It's going to be okay. It won't hurt anything. Now, I love because it kind of pushes them around a little bit more. If it's too much for you or you're nervous, just what the heck is going on my here? You can just, you know, lot it. But I like marbling it. So marble. Now you can see I get gesso and you can see that it kind of soaks in the paper. That's all right though. Let me dry this and show you. Let's get this all dry. up now can you see now if you, you can see like right here is a little puddle of um you know color that's a little you know not exactly what i'm wanting dry underneath here yeah i can just wipe a little bit off same with here i can make that drip by banging it now that's like an army green color, but I'm okay with that. Like an army green brown. I'm going to hit it with my heat gun now. And that'll help push it down and give it a veining look. See? And then I'll go and just kind of tap those little blobs on me. And just so it's not so much. See here. Okay, and this is dry. So let's see. So this is the blue that I put on here with the glue, and I'm going to wet my brush. Let's see. And you can see it's, you know, the tiniest bit. Now that could be from my brush or my water, but it, that color is staying there. So you see what that white school glue did? It made it a little bit more permanent for you. It's not so... Uh, you know, lifting so much that you can go over it with a little bit of color, with a little bit of water, with other color and kind of layer it, which is what we're going to do. Okay. So I'm happy with this, these backgrounds. I think they're pretty, pretty good. Um, I want to do, I want to show you like stamping, but do I have, I do have some black. And I do have this, and let's try this. Okay. So I have a little kitty cat face. And just my archival ink can be any color. But let's 
you want a color that will an ink pad that will not run so we can kind of go on if we want and you can see you can definitely that was another question i got you can definitely stamp on top of it not a big deal now here's what you can here's the fun stuff and you have to think out of the box and look outside of the box play outside of the box you see you have a cat face well it needs a ears and no you know what i mean like ears and all that kind of stuff in a face so you have the face part why not do the shape of the head and the ears and then you can make your own you know cat be on here we can make an odd cat we can make what have you let's try it i can't guarantee anything but let's try um i'm going to use my pen this pen does, uh, it's the big velocity and it's a thick kind of end. And I like using it cause it won't smear and you can definitely use, um, pencil or colored pencil or watercolor pencil. Doesn't matter. Paint doesn't matter. on top and this just look at your your stamps and your stencils in a different way right that you can do these kind of things and then you have like a little cat what's wrong with that you could go in there and play you can give them a little you know little arms it doesn't matter this one you can leave alone it doesn't it doesn't matter all right so let's say i want to do a little bit of a little bit of texture but like i said you look at these and they resemble each other right the colors and all so let's go maybe we want this one a little darker so i'm just going to take some punchinella i'm going to take i think i'll try my dabber maybe i'll use my brush let's see i'm going to go i'm just going to go and dry though and I'm just going to tap it in. If it's a little dry, the paint itself, definitely uh, you can spray it. But I would tap off some of it. And then kind of go in. And add some. Now I'll wet it. And what I'm going to do is go in with just a little bit of this red. I don't want too much because I don't want it to run everywhere. So you do want to kind of tap it off and kind of move it a little bit. Yeah, that red's a little runny. It's okay though. You'll still see what I'm trying to do. And you see it didn't move the blue underneath. Now you can see the red's a little wet and that happens sometimes. What are you going to do? Um, so you just go in and just lightly tap where you want to lift up a lot of that water. And when you have the puddles up, you can then go in and just dry it. And I suggest keep drying. You know what I mean? When you get doing a few levels. You know, and you could put this up higher, you know, the cat or whatever, but let's do something on here, but let's do color that we might not have done. All right, I'm going to draw my brush. Um, what about, what about a green? We didn't do a green. Let's do a bright green. So I'm just going to kind of dip it in my little thing. I'm going to go in a little water here. Move that. little glue a little yellow if it wants to be in there my brush was a little too wet it's okay i'm gonna just jam it off a little bit and get a little more because it was a little dry dun, 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 dun. don't stick your glue back in your paint use a different brush
because you don't want to mix that green in there. Okay, we didn't have that green in there, but I'm digging that green, so I think I might bring it here. Just fun, just have fun. What else, what else, what else, what else, what else? Now I'll tell you what I don't dig. I'm gonna tell you right now, I'm gonna take my brush. I'm not digging this line that goes across here. So I'm just going to take my brush with a little bit of water and kind of rub it to get it up. <laughs> oh, that's what she said. And then I'm just going to tap it a little bit because I really just didn't dig that, that line. Okay. All right. All right. You can go in and you can trace. You could do, I love doing dots and just all this kind of stuff, especially with the watercolor. A lot of fun. But I need something over here. But what do I want? What about if we do a stamp, but I don't care what the stamp is? Do you know what I'm saying? And maybe I'll go in with a color. just on my stamp just kind of put it here and maybe here not where not worrying exactly what it is do you know what I mean just to give some texture a little bit more And this one's like faded out a little bit, which I like that look. Okay. Not my favorite. I probably should have stopped when I was ahead. But I think you get my idea. And then we have this. And like I said, forget about the cat. The cat's just showing you that you could do a stamp on there. But this is your ATC background. And then what I probably would do is take my where is it where are you friend where are you i know i am yeah i would take a black marker or even um and you want permanent or you can even use the paint that you have sitting um you know do some paint because i like to do just a little bit of this and i'll do one side A little bit of water. You can smear these. You can work with these a bit, these Faber Castells, uh, before they dry. So that's why I like to do only, you know, certain parts. You could do any color that you want. But I like the smudge. You can use a brush to smudge too, but. I just like doing that. Not only do the one, but I'll show y'all. You can do this with, like I said, a Sharpie. You can do it with, um, what else? What are those? Bix, alcohol ink, Copics, anything that's permanent. I know the dollar store even carries some permanent uh, pens, you know, permanent markers. I love the dark around it, but do you see how it adds? Um, it just adds, I don't know, like a little frame or something like that. And like I said, then you can go, you know, this was just showing you how you can move on with a different stamp, but you could stamp, you know, in the middle, um, a saying, a quote, you could just put a quote on here. You could do, you know, whatever you want. Maybe something that you would like to do, you would want to do is, I'll do it on this one real quick. 
maybe you're not a color person or maybe you do it and you're not digging the color as bright as it is. Well, you know, you can always do what I love to do and I'll do it white, but I'm just using white, wicker white, um, wicker white uh, acrylic paint. And you can go in, you could take an old gift card, credit card, brush, whatever, and you can just kind of go in and scrape it down. And that's going to push all that back. Oh, I could sit here and play. I see some people going live, doing their live streams and just like for hours. And I'm like, oh, I get it. I could sit and play forever. Okay, so you see how it kind of blows that out a bit. And that's another look. And if it's too much, you just go back in and you just... You can spray with a little water that'll help lift it but you just kind of go dab it or you know pull it up a little bit if it's too much uh white but i love i mean look at the difference in the colors and how they still relate to each other but they're not the same and this is of course if you guys have been with me you know i love the kids fun foam with all the um decorative uh edges so or bumps or whatever they have on them so I like to kind of dip into color and then look and look how we're building. Maybe you want some of the green. Maybe you want some of the white over there. You know what I mean? Oh, the fun, the fun. All right, I'm done. I'm done. I promise. Just showing you, and this makes that correlate a little bit more. So the fun. Okay. I'm so excited. All right. So you can see using white school glue, no big deal. It could be Mod Podge, could be whatever. And you get the general idea where you're, you know, you're carrying over different parts so they resemble each other. And, you know, but they look so different. Now, like I said, put make four, five, six. And you'll be amazed at the difference that you can, the different uh, ways that you can make them look that they relate, but they're not the same. And that's what I suggest. A lot of you are starting out to ATC cards. Um, and I get these questions all the time. And, you know, so I really want to show you guys this is as easy. I mean, you saw how easy. Now, if I didn't talk so much, I probably would have had it less. But you can see. A lot of fun now real quick with this i like to take you know i have paper sitting everywhere and what i like to do is and the glue is not going to bother me i'm just gonna move it move it move it and try to pick up what i can and we're kind of starting a watercolor background of our own so I'm not wasting any of that delicious color. And I'll leave that there till I get another, you know, bout of color, which I'm sure I'll have in five minutes. And um, yeah, then you just wash it off, which I will do when I'm done. Just make sure you wash that glue off because it will put a little film on your uh, mat or whatever you're working on. That's why I'm using wax paper and stuff like that. So you can just throw your palette away is a good idea. So this is what we ended up with. Let me know down below what you guys think. If you do this, please tag me. I would love to see you guys and any more ATC questions asked. Like I said, um, I hope this answers uh, a few of your questions that you had asked me. Please don't pay mind to my nails. I'm peeling the polish off. So yeah, a lot of fun. And like I said, same general colors but different 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 as always please be kind to each other you never know what battle somebody else is fighting if you've just found me and you would like to be subscribed please click the subscribe button down below and then click the bell next to it to be notified when i upload uh leave me a thumbs up if you enjoy uh these atc backgrounds i love doing backgrounds i love doing mixed media backgrounds and atc backgrounds and our general backgrounds and i love it all so let me know by leaving me a thumbs up and as always, please be kind to each other. You never know what battle somebody else is fighting. Progress, not perfection. I love you guys so very much. I hope you have an awesome day. I will see you in my next video. Bye-bye.